really short. Coming in for another part to our video series, okay? And obviously talking to some of my students right now on the Discord about um, some stuff that we were talking about on price. And uh, like the interesting part is there's a lot of resources in here. Um, I have all sorts of different chats. There's my content. YouTube links, ideas, experiments, wins and losses. Uh, I trade Forex, crypto, and options. Uh, we do narratives. We do swing trading ideas. Um, obviously, we trade intraday, of course. My bad, I did the blood real quick. A lot of trading channels, if we're not on Zoom. And my education section is this big. Yeah. There's private Discord videos. There's trade planning sections and like how to trade plan. Uh, resources from ICT, Hoppy, videos I like from them, you know, YouTube stuff, uh, entry hacks and things like that. And I really love them just all the content available for you guys, you know. It's as big as a book, I'll be honest. There's a lot of information here. I mean, I can just, you know, go anywhere. It gets, yeah, it gets crazy. There's a lot of resources here that you guys can go and check out, all right? So, yeah, if you ever want to join the Discord, just let me know. All right. So anyway, but whole point of this is we're looking at NQ. All right. And so you could probably tell by the title of this video, um, we're doing a few things here with not just all the talk about gold back levels, but how does AMD play a role inside of gold back levels? Okay. So yes, we can talk about um, price action this week. And so currently I'm on a three minute chart. Let's go to the hour really quick. And I just wanna clean this up. Let's do one thing at a time. Um, those who know me know I don't like uh, this organization or too much on the screen at once. So uh, if this is far too much, I just don't like it. But now where's the lighter? Dude, how many times do I say that in my videos? Like, where is the lighter? Okay, I found it. We're good. All right. So watch this. Long story short, uh, we're looking at the week so far. So um, most important is we did a live stream in the Discord today, and we looked at this price action, and I called out why buys were appropriate here and obviously as this is spooling down this is interesting for this uh asia session we'll get to that but the biggest thing here i want like my chart structure sunday's the weekend monday tuesday and my wednesday london is always going to be green and again we had a bank holiday so uh a complete day is london new york am in this brown ish orange i have no idea if somebody in the comments can tell me like uh what color this is officially like is it brown is it orange i i'm terrible at seeing certain colors so like i think it's brown but i have no idea um this is red i can see yes and obviously black is um separating my my days in between asia session right um, and I, I always say where I get my references from. So, um, big shout out to PC who taught me about weekend, Saturday, Sunday and sessions ever since then. I mean, he's completely correct. This is how you look at the marketplace and it makes everything super visual for you. The reason why I bring that up, right? 
obviously we know what time the sessions open clearly okay um this indicator i mentioned before is slightly off on when we're trading futures when we're trading forex it's fine but um uh, trading futures it's going to be off by an hour just because futures uh is you know using two six and ten versus um you know the other market using one five and nine if you're familiar with these numbers um obviously just like when you know four hour candles are, are opening and closing right so realistically yo this blood is fire i mean i try a bunch of different types of strains per day or during the week and what I got right now, I, I really like. So anyway, um, when you're looking at the week separated like this, okay, whole time, a lot of people get like really frustrated because the whole theme of a lot of these lectures this week in my Discord is about market organization. And what I mean by that is looking at the marketplace a certain way, Yes, liquidity is above and below you. Yes, each day offers you a, a, a easy opportunity if you go to find it. But my thing is not just this price wing or whatever, or you know how you're viewing the marketplace right now. You have to come in and start understanding that it's up to you to start operating along with algorithms perspective not just your own and i say that all the time in my lectures so really quick my bad there we go um the biggest thing i want to talk about again here is amd cycles we talk about amd cycles um it's not just accumulation manipulation distribution that i care about what i care slightly more about is what I call the expected price action. And again, I talk on this with my students a lot. Think about this. How often do you think about function or functionality of the algorithm in the marketplace? So I'm talking about expected price action, AMD cycles. You need to come in and start thinking like this. What is the point of price doing X, Y, or Z? Hold on. What do I mean by that? Now let's turn on and run an hour chart, right? Obviously, we talk about AMD or the marketplace being fractal. This, this is very visual, right? We have AMD. AMD. And the reason why we talk about AMD cycles, it's not just random. It doesn't start just at any time. It's perfectly organized. And that's what I want you to understand. And so, obviously, those who are, and big shout out to Day, right? So, Day Theory. He does an incredible, incredible, incredible job. And once you back test and you understand how this works, he is completely, completely correct. There's two processes that happen inside of AMD. And I just deleted it. I do this all the time. Now watch. I want to bring this back really quick on screen. So AMD X and X AMD. All right. And again, he is completely, completely correct. The reason why this is so cool is, again, we see a lot of evidence of this wherever you want to search for it. So do you see how even last week, okay, and this is my point. We're going to check out this week, and we're going to do...
last week is an interesting one. And I want to check out this week here. So we'll tag these. So this week. And I want to talk about this week. Okay. And again, if I'm saying that there's two processes for AMD. Before we drop down to the intraday, and I'll show you that way, I want to talk about how the fractal nature of the marketplace plays such a role for us. And this is cool. We talk about expected price action. Then we talk about function. Okay. And again, I'm a very organized person. That's why when people ask me like, yo, what is my favorite trading method or what am I doing every day? You're aiming to operate from the market's perspective. So I'm not forcing my own bias from the chart nine times out of 10. I'm letting the chart tell me exactly what it wants to do and literally just participating and going with the flow. Okay. Based on logic though, time and price. So when we talk about AMD, how cool this is. We understand that AMD is just a, you know, accumulation, manipulation, distribution, or, you know, when we talk about the processes specifically, when we talk about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way to Friday, it goes in a certain order and you can actually catch it and see it based on the price action. And now when you go to trade this on a certain day or a certain week of the month or a certain 90 minute cycle, this is what I mean. Do you see this Monday here? It's very trendy, isn't it? Yeah. Now, when you look at it this way, right? Every single day is one part of this process or the other one. And again, these go in a specific order. So if it's accumulation, manipulation, distribution, and we're going to talk about X. Accumulation is what we expect it to be. You see how the Tuesday is not saying it doesn't move at all, but look at this compared to your Monday. It's very consolidated, isn't it? Nice small down run, little up move, but compared to your Monday, this is an insane run from your London high down to PM session, right? Got it. Now, if we're talking about which one this is, and these go in order, and it's only one or the other, the reason why this is so cool is because you can come on and expect something like this if you're paying attention. So if this is not an A for accumulation, that means we're looking at the second process. This is now an X for us. And again, typically your X is like a distribution cycle. Okay. That's why you often see like a lot of traders like me, for example, I don't trade Mondays a lot. If I find that it's an X or I can see evidence of that early, that's no problem. I'll, I'll take a trade on a Monday sometimes, but not often do I want to look for Mondays for trading. I like Mondays because it's typically, again, the cycle A. So it's accumulating. And I'm nine times out of 10, watch this. X. Manipulation. What does manipulation do? It takes liquidity. It's too far, too fast. This is an even bigger run than my Monday. On Tuesday, Wednesday is manipulation. And then look what happens on the Thursday. We do this insane run for a distribution day. We come down a little bit, but realistically, since this distribution is technically a bullish distribution, distribution can often start wild moves. So think what happened from here going into the Thursday, 
you pop it to a distribution cycle. And see it. Monday takes liquidity from Friday, and now you're you're bearish. But now think about this. Again, I'm doing one week at a time. And I'm showing you. The reason why we know that it's an X is because it's too trendy. If this was an A, it would be much more consolidated, much more in a box, not moving very much. Stalemate style. Way more consolidated. And the funny part is people ask me like, yo, if there's five days a week, why is there only four in here instead of five? Or four parts of each cycle. It's just five days. You learned from ICT that Friday is a measure of retracement in some way, shape, or form. So that's why TGIF setups we can do independently of the A and the X, or my bad, X, A, and D here and trade the Friday because it's a measure of retracement. We're just going to come in and again, it hits this trade value gap, optimal trade entry style, boom. You can sell AM and then buy PM if you wanted to, but I'm not interested in trading both sides at the same time, normally. Um, if I know the macro for the day or the day's bias around a certain time of the day, like New York optimal trade and entry, I'll just run that and be done for the day and be satisfied, not over trading. Never encouraging that. But the biggest thing here is we're talking about AMDX or XAMD. And you see, when we talk about expected price action, how you can verify if this is an X, you're going to expect this to be a, a more consolidated, compact, you know, be short with each move that you try to get in. Take the first target and be done. When this takes liquidity, right? Let's say you take the, the London move here. Let's zoom in. Right? But we understand the range on this one is going to be a lot smaller. Let's say you take that turtle suit right here. This is like a London high right here, four o'clock in the morning, London kill zone. You have Asia that's wide open as, as buy side liquidity. We always talk about accumulation being, um, again, always getting destroyed on both sides of the marketplace. So the top here gets destroyed by London. You could take profits right at this uh, previous day's low. Leave a runner if you want to. But 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, you need to be looking for, uh, you know, either getting out of your cells here and being done. Or if you obviously understand that it's all about not just your perspective, but operating from the market's perspective, like I said. So when you're coming in like this, you're underneath previous day's low. And again, even if you're not expecting Monday's high, you have to only just understand the assignment. I say this to my students all the time. Understand the assignment here. It's an A. So this is X. It's going to be a more super, super trendy day. It's not going to give you two of these in a row. X, A, M. You know what I mean? And we understand manipulation and what it is. We talk about function. A or whatever is going to be accumulated. It's going to be up, down, up, down. It's going to be annoying like that. It's going to create liquidity into the marketplace up and down. Just like Asia does. Do you feel what I'm saying? That's why it looks like this. And when you see a manipulation cycle... Way too far, way too fast, the entire day. You can come in and expect that. Damn, you know what? XA uh, on the Tuesday, you know what? I got to get ready tomorrow. It's really going to give me some money if I'm ready. Do you feel what I'm saying? And we're going to take it down to an intraday level in just a second. All right? Bear with me. Watch. Now, this is interesting because, again, we talk about distribution. It doesn't always have to retrace or be a manipulation down for distribution to go up. It could easily be a manipulation down and distribution can easily follow. Do not get confused with that. Everyone always thinks that it has to be a, a, a reversal 
profile when you get to distribution. It does not have to be. Oftentimes it can be, but it does not have to be. That's where a lot of people have uh, trouble with trading in the marketplace because they're looking for things to be like super and this week right here, right? Um, they look for trading to be super black and white. They want to do the same thing every day. Not saying you can't be a routine person and have a, a model that supports um, some sort of profit for sometimes five days within a week once you get to a certain level, right? But this is my thing. When we're coming on, look how consistent this up run is. People get so focused on just this. But this is why you come on and you see me breaking things down day by day. So what is this one instead? Way different than what we just talked about. So what is this? Hey. What does this do? Too far, too fast. M. And why? Why do we know this is an A? Look at the price action. This is why I don't trade Mondays. I watch it. I wait for it. I see what it gives me in terms of structure, not just X and D or and DX, but seeing where liquidity also rests anyway. So if I want to take a trade, right? So when I start operating Tuesday London, which I normally do, here. Now I'm coming in and saying, you know what? London makes the low of the day a lot of times, right? Basic ICP. Dude. I'm actually going to use this here just because I'm annoyed. All right. No, nobody wants to take the trade right now. All right. So, A, M, London makes a low. We manipulate up. Taking the buy side of liquidity that was engineered obviously here. So we go down a little bit. But then it's also applied at this high. Here. Dude. No, I can tell trading views uh updating or doing maintenance. So sometimes some of these uh tools will act like they're not working and they're right on the screen and they pop in. Anyway, so I want to point to this instead. So watch. Really want to use a tool, but it's not working. Anyway, when you see the buy side liquidity engineered right here in the marketplace, okay, here we go. Let's go back. All right, there we go. Perfect. There we go. Preview always trips, dude. Anyway, so when we have all these areas here, I knew I wasn't crazy. So um, when we pop in and we have all these areas to identify, think about the narration of the marketplace. It's just like a book. So when you have this A from Monday, we don't trade it, we watch it. When you pop into a kill zone, London, New York, you understand the assignment here. You don't have to always sweep something for it to be a great situation. London itself makes a low here after midnight. Now watch. Midnight candle, we pop in and make a low. That's your wick to the daily candle. Right here. Shell goes up, down, London low, blast off. And you manipulate. It's going to take this high and some. It's going to really make people uncomfortable that expected shorts from here. We went down here the last time. Why didn't it go down again? That's why we don't trade retail concepts. Does that make sense? And again, what happens next? A, M. Come on now. Be creative. M. 
distribution. And X, there's two distribution cycles. Your X, A, M, manipulates, takes liquidity, goes crazy. As soon as we get to again, what? That's why this is highlighted a certain way visually for me. You can steal my chart layout all, all you want to. Please do. This is easy to look at. It's comfortable visually. I'm on the computer a lot, right? Um, A, M, D, optimal trade entry. There's a fair value gap down here that you can reference if you want. You can use gold back levels if you'd like. Doesn't matter. But again, you're expecting, okay, if I can just tap in and find what direction I still need, maybe it's still bullish. We're going to check for it. But like I said, a few minutes ago, manipulation up does not mean distribution has to go down. It does not have to do that. People have to stop believing that. It could very well manipulate up, distribute right up to. No problem with that. You have to understand where your draw liquidity is, your dealing range high is, your dealing range lows are. You could come in and dominate this thing. A M D X. If it's any different, you'll know when Monday is done. Don't trade Monday, even if it is an X and you can see it. Just let your manipulation pop in. Understand the function. Too far, too fast. Catch the move. Leave a runner. If it does retrace on you on that Wednesday, fine. Or if it wants to make bearish price action, I mean, even if you're not holding it, obviously. But let's say you wake up, you know, Wednesday, whatever, and you're looking for immediate uh, buys again or sells. And the sells don't work. 8 to 11, you're looking for New York optimal trade entry. You get that, and you blast off again. Boom, bullish. And again, London here does an amazing job. Let's turn it up, right? Three minute chart. Let's go current or near current. The reason why I'm trying to get you guys comfortable with some of these ideas. And again, there's plenty of resources on this on the internet. So it's not just me. I don't really care where else you um, decide to study the AMD stuff. Um, or any of this stuff for that matter. My biggest concern is that you come in and with me, you're going to have a certain understanding. And watch. You have um, a little indicator here by handles something, 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 right? Let's see, 90 minute cycles. Yeah, so this guy, right? Just type in 90 minute cycles and you'll find it. But um, 90 minute cycles plus MTF is what you want. This is the best indicator for it. So what we're talking about, marketplace is what? Fractal. This is a perfect time to, I guess, like the blunt, right? I guess so. Damn. Oh no, my water is on the other side of me. Okay, cool. I'll kind of find it for a second. Hit the water real quick. Hmm. But the biggest idea here is that since the marketplace is fractal, the candles themselves are fractal, the concepts we use are fractal, it makes so much sense not just to come in and say you know what damn maybe i'm stuck looking at the daily or maybe i'm stuck looking at the a certain time frame no you can do the same thing on the day you can do in the hour same thing on the hour you can do in a minute same structures appear same expected price action same thing with amd here so when we talk about how to really break this down in a fractal way the same way i just talk about monday Tuesday, Wednesday to Friday, right? Asia session. It's either going to be a 
Now, a five minute chart to really show you what I mean. But trading view is quite slow. Still doing maintenance. So let's see if this wants to react. There we go. Back. Now, watch this. Now, on the day by itself, right? See how we have Asia operating here? We have London, New York, and New York PM. But let's break it down one more level, the same way we did on the day. So look at the expected price action, right? Or price action in general. Is this an A or an X? I don't even have to take long. You already know. This is an X. How do we know? Look at this thing. That's a lot of money, man. Think about that. This is not a low box. This does make it seem like, okay, well, it doesn't really go that far. No. But look at this little drop. This is quite trendy. The entire session. When you look at the X like that, it makes you think, okay, well, what's next? When you get to London, not saying it does not move. But this is going to be way more consolidated, way more compact. And look, when we talk about accumulation, notice how the top of London here gets murdered with this here, but the bottom of it also gets taken. So not the 3 a.m. high, but we get a major low, my bad, major low, from London taken. The whole session is basically straight liquidity. Does that make sense? It's an A. That's why you have to come in and understand fractal concepts. So we're looking at a X, A, M, D on the day. Each session itself is going to be representative of one of these parts of the cycle now. You can come in and do it just like that. The same way that, okay, X, A, whatever, doesn't matter. If Asia was an X, you can leave this alone or you can scalp London. You know it's not going to be a long, intense, crazy price swing like Asia was. You'll have to wait for New York to do that. This is your X, A, M, and then look, D. Right? It has its own cycle for the session. And it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I'll make sure you can see it all. Yep. X, A, M, manipulation up. What does that do? Takes liquidity, takes more liquidity up here. Okay, all this here. Pop it to a fair value gap. So we have imbalance here. See that? You feel what I'm saying? And so they say, yo, well, how do you know the distribution is going to go downside and not like just straight reverse on you like that? How do I know that this is going to be a singular move? You're operating one at a time. So X, A, trade the M and be done when this is almost over. When the session is almost over, evaluate where you are if you like this here. Don't just randomly stay for this just because it's a distribution cycle. Evaluate the price action. And again, time plays the biggest role. So I say this all the time. If you're in at three, 
because I trade London, so you're in at 3 to 4 a.m., whatever, you're going to be done by 8 a.m. taking profits, 9 times out of 10, knowing what type of cycle it is. If it's an AM, you can hold it from 3 to 8, no problem. If it's an XA, you might want to be short or really be real scalpy or look for scalps, okay? And just coming in and watching Asia or watching Monday, you'll be ahead of the game this way. And that's why the way that I like to describe it, I feel like it's very helpful. So look at this. X, A, M. The M takes out both sides of liquidity. Here and here. So that's how you know that this is a real manipulation cycle. It's annoying at first. It's going to be scary to those who don't understand what's going on in this area. Yeah, you're going to look for shorts, look for long shorts, and you're getting chopped up. You might even blow an account in this area of trading futures. Damn. Another reset. You don't want to do that to your account, right? You have to understand your market environment. That goes with understanding if it's X, A, M, or D. Understanding when you have news, like we did today, at 10 o'clock in the morning. That's why we have the spike down. Everything is explained. And we talked about a lot of interesting things here, especially with the expected price action. Now, when we do a part two on AMD cycles, we'll talk more about what I mentioned earlier. 90 minute cycles. Now watch. If you notice this, right? AMD is still, again, perfectly timed. The same way how it's one cycle per day, one part of the cycle per session. But each session also has its own A, M, D, X. Or, in this case, obviously, what? See how it's blue right here? Turn these off so you can see. Watch this. X. And this is what we call New York Q1. Every session has its own AMD cycle completely. It has four parts. So when you see this down here, right? This is a 6 a.m. to 7.30. Every single day, you're going to look for this the same time to be an X or an A for New York. This is an X. And look at your A, M. Do you feel what I'm saying? It's very manipulative. Up, down, up, down. But it can start a move. Then you also are left with your D right here. X, A, M, and then distribution. Does that make sense? 6 to 7.30. 7.30 to 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock to 10.30. These are all 90-minute cycles. AMD happens in 90 minutes at a time. It goes from one to the next flawlessly every single day. Go study it. If you're new to this, Go have some fun telling you to go study it. If you're understanding or you've seen the video, you, you know about day theory. You can come in and do some cool stuff. You understand what turtle soup is. Q3 can take Q2's low. And you can understand that this is what we call it AMD turtle. 90 minute cycle. So when the lows are taken first, and all of uh, this is wide open in this area, of course it's going to spike up, manipulate, take lows, spike up. You can also see a lot of evidence here too. Watch. Look at this. 
we go. And the turtle. Now, accumulation cycle, right? Or X, A, whatever. So this one's a little tougher because it's an age succession. And on top of that, this is a little wonky looking. So it's a little tough to figure out if this is an X or an A. But right here, right? The biggest idea is, I don't really give a fuck about that for a moment. I give a fuck about more about Q1, 2, 3, 4. And the reason why it's color coded like this, and why we, you know, I also say Q1 through 4, is when I say AMD X or X AMD, whatever, I'm also thinking about the function of these things. So this is, again, the building of liquidity a lot of times, this Q1 or the accumulation box. My manipulation cycle takes liquidity. It murders liquidity a lot of times. And so when this opens, we trade down. Manipulation or the red box opens. I've got 90 minutes and I'm paying attention to this. Takes the low first and we turtle. It takes other liquidity here too, like the, that was wide open here. But the problem is, it runs up and it takes this uh, high right after. This was wide open when this started. The lows were taken. You have to attack the buy side. Manipulation is going to not leave the liquidity open from the buy or sell side from Q1 a lot of times. It's not. That's a really, really cool hack with that. And not just on 90-minute cycles, but think about this the same way I'm talking for Asia for Monday, first week of the month. January, February, March of the year, the high and the low often gets destroyed. Go check it out. And when you get to, again, whether it's A, M, what did I talk about? D. Distribution. We talk about function. Last part of the lecture. A is liquidity, right? The creation of liquidity on both buy and sell side, fractal flout on both sides getting created. Buyers and sellers in the marketplace are, again, buy stop, sell stop, doesn't matter. There's orders all over this thing and people are just eager to get into the marketplace. They get destroyed by this. They don't understand expected price action makes manipulation visually look like this. It's gonna look like a, a, a massive run. Too far, too fast. A M takes liquidity, the function of it. That's what it looks like, and that's the function of it. Too far, too fast, takes liquidity. I'm trying to get that repetition in your brain. When you look at distribution, it can easily start the real move. I'm not saying this is not a real move, but you have to understand when this is done, you might want to be done. Distribution can continue like we talked about, but if it does not, you're ready for it. And the distribution is going to be a long, intense price swing. If this starts to go bearish and you can see it like that halfway through the cycle, it's probably not going to stop. The reason why you have uh, four parts here instead of three, if it's uh, AMD, right? We talked about AMD X. There's two distribution cycles. Q4 can be a continuation of Q3, and that's important. It can also be the reversal of Q3, and that's important. You need to look for vibes of which one it is. Again, when you change into from Q3 to 4, you're also looking for signs of full reversal. Is this fair value gap going to hold? Is an order block going to hold? Is a DR high or low going to be supportive here or break? That's what the evidence you're looking for to get yourself, again, holding this if you're already in. Or maybe you want to take a partial and hold a runner. Make it easy on yourself mentally. But the whole time you're understanding, these things have time-based functionality. Expected price action as to what this looks like and what it does. It's no longer a secret what you need to do in the marketplace in terms of how you operate. Participation now is going to be way more selective for you. You're not just buying and selling every candle. 
trying to catch this thing like you're chasing the wind. No. You're much more selective now. Watch this video again and then watch part two tomorrow. You're going to see exactly what we talk on. Okay. This was an amazing lecture. We'll talk on the next one shortly.